hi guys today we will look at problems in circle theorem now what we're going to be doing is taking an approach which says we should be able to solve a circle theorem problem in under five minutes there's no magic to that it simply means we're going to take an approach which says all problems have clues about how to solve them so the first thing we want to do is look at the problem or the diagram that we're given to see if we see anything that will cause us to think of a particular theorem to apply so importantly we need to understand how the theorems are applied but then just as importantly we need to know when to apply them so in our first diagram for example let us just observe it carefully to see what we have as a clue the first thing that I've noticed is that I'm seeing a cyclic quadrilateral V, W, X and Y and I'm also seeing as a second clue two parallel lines now those clues mean something because it's going to point me in the direction of particular theorems to apply in the first instance for the cyclic quadrilateral we first of all identify it as shaded here and then we know that for the cyclic quadrilateral the most common clue the most common theorem that you apply when you see this one is that opposite angles are supplementary which means that if angle Y is 94 degrees then angle W plus angle Y should add to 180 therefore do angle W would be 86 degrees a very simple clue very simple application of a theorem in cyclic quadrilateral in my second um, clue the clue with parallel lines the instant I see parallel lines it tells me that I should look for an opportunity to apply the theory of alternate angles being equal or Z angles so I identify my parallel lines and I identify my Z and therefore if the angle WV X which is this angle is equal to 48 degrees then I expect that this alternate angle will be equal to 48 degrees as well so two very simple clues two very straightforward application of um, very simple theorems let's look at the second diagram now once again let's observe the diagram carefully and uh, look for clues what's the first thing that we note that a that triangle OSU is an isosceles triangle and clue number two is telling me that I have an angle subtended from chord SU at the center and I have an angle at R which subtends from that same chord therefore I'm going to look for an opportunity to apply the angle at the center theorem let's go ahead and do that notice my isosceles triangle why is it isosceles because OS and OU represent the radius of that circle that means they are equal and therefore I have two equal sides therefore it becomes an isosceles triangle so what for isosceles triangle we know that the base angles must be equal and therefore if the one base angle is equal to 40 degrees the other base angle will also be 40 degrees and by simply recognizing that angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees then my angle at O at the center would be a hundred degrees this takes me into the application of clue number two or the theorem which surrounds the application of theorem number two angles at the center we note is equal to twice the angle at the circumference so if angle O is equal to 100 degrees angle R is one half of that or 50 degrees once again two very simple clues and straightforward application of, of theorems which relate to those clues um, in our third example and this is a very important one it comes up a lot in our exam this particular diagram the most obvious clue that con you should you should note is that it has one tangent now once you see a tangent bells should go off in your head because 90 percent of the time you will be asked to apply the theorem which says that the angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment 
You may also be asked to apply the theorem which says the angle between the tangent and the radius is equal to 90 degrees. So I will spend a little time going through those two particular theorems to make sure we all understand it. Let us redraw the diagram to first identify what the angle between the tangent and the chord is. Let's relate the theorem again. It says the angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So two things. What is the angle between the tangent and the chord? And what is this thing we're calling the alternate segment? Let's recognize them here. We'll note that angle X, as shown here, is the angle between tangent RTD and chord TB. So that's clearly the angle between the tangent and the chord which we have called X. So notice that chord TB also divides this circle into two segments. One segment is between the angle and the chord and the other segment which we will call the alternate segment is the one, the next segment from that circle or rather in that circle. So notice what the alternate segment is. It is, a seg it is the other segment. The first segment being the segment between the tangent and the chord. The other segment is alternate segment. So any angle which subtends from that chord in the alternate segment will be equal to x. It has to be subtend at the circumference. So let's observe carefully that angle x which subtends at point A on the circumference from chord TB is the same as the angle between the tangent and the chord. So just to slow that down a bit, identify the angle between the tangent and the chord, identify your alternate segment, and any angle which subtends from that chord in the alternate segment is equal to the angle between the tangent and the chord. So x and x are the same as shown here. That is simply what that means. And I think the only real issue has always been to identify what the alternate segment is. And I think we have demonstrated that here. Um, in another case, we may have the chord on the left side of our circle, or it could be anywhere, in fact. But in this case, notice the angle between the tangent and the chord. And notice that I've identified the segment, the first segment, and the alternate segment. So notice we can very quickly determine that angle ATR and angle AT and angle ABT, which is this angle ATR and this angle ABT are equal. Angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Okay, okay, let us intr introduce some numbers so we could clearly identify what we're talking about. Assuming that you were asked to find angle W as indicated here in yellow, then note for example that you're given an angle of 36 degrees and if you also note very carefully that 36 degrees is between is the angle between tangent RTD and chord TY. Notice also that angle W subtends from chord TY in the alternate segment and as you notice this is the angle between, this is a segment that is between the chord and angle and therefore the alternate segment is where we find angle number W and therefore based on our theorem these two angles should be equal at 36 degrees. The other application of a theorem that relates to tangents is the fact that the angle between the tangent and the radius is 90 degrees. Let us demonstrate a theorem here. Note carefully the radius OT and chord RTD and the theorem says that those the angle between those two is equal to 90 degrees as shown. So for example if one part of the angle was 36 degrees and we were asked to find the other section of that angle then we would simply subtract 36 from 90 to get 54 degrees. Very straightforward application of, of this particular theorem but the most important thing to do is to recognize that it does exist and once we see problems that uh, relate to a tangent then we need to look out for 
opportunities to apply those two theorems. Finally, here we have a case where we have two tangents on the circle. Now the first thing to do is to recognize that a quadrilateral exists between the two tangents and the center O and in this case the angle O ST is 90 degrees because as indicated previously the angle between the radius and the tangent is equal to 90 degrees so in both cases we have O ST is equal to 90 degrees and similarly O UT is equal to 90 degrees at once we also re recognize that since angle S and angle U are both 90 degrees then both add to 180 therefore those angles are supplementary by extension this would imply that angle O at the center and angle T are also supplementary angles and therefore an important outcome from this is that angle O and angle T are supplementary so if angle T is equal to 80 degrees then angle O is equal to 100 degrees one other important point to note for uh, circle theorem problems with two tangents is that any line which joins O and T will bisect the quadrilateral into such that angle SOT is 50 degrees and angle STO will be equal to 40 degrees, one half of the original angles. Uh, let us continue to review other application of these theorems using real problems that are typically shown on your your exam and you can review these applications in lesson 2. See you then.